Hi everyone, and you are welcome to this lecture, Python Collections. In this lecture, I'm going to define what a Python collection is. We are going to learn what the collection details that you have to know about each one of the collection. We will see collection attributes like order, mutability, indexing, slicing, and I will end up this lecture by a quick summary. So let's get started. What's Python collection? Collection is a data structure that is defined in order to have one or more than one items. So you have to know that collection is different from numbers in which we can store only one item. Also, keep in mind that the item inside a collection could be a number or another collection, and this is depends on the collection itself. In Python, we have the following collection. We have string, list, tuple, dictionary, and set. Each one of these collections has its own features, and over the time, you will get the required experience in order to know in which context you have to use each one of these collections. Now let's see the collection details that you have to know about each one of these collections. First of all, syntax. What I mean by syntax here is how you are going to define this collection. So for example, if you want to define a list, you have to use a square bracket, whereas if you want to define a dictionary, you have to use a curly braces, and so on. Also, you have to know the functions that usually are used with these collections, and this will make your life easier because being familiar with these functions will save your time to not create these functions by yourself later on when you need these functionalities. Also, for each one of the collection, there are some attributes that you have to know in details in order to know in which context each one of these collection is used. The first attribute is order, and usually we say a collection is ordered or unordered. The second one is immutability, and we say a data structure is immutable or unmutable. The third attribute is indexing, and usually we say a collection is indexed or unindexed. And finally, slicing. So we have to know if this collection or any collection supports or does not support slicing. Don't worry if you find all of these attributes and you are not familiar with, because in the following slides, I'm going to explain each one of these in details. Let's start by talking about order, which is the first attribute. We say a collection is ordered if it has a sequence of items where each item has its own known and fixed location in that sequence. To understand the idea better, let's see an example. Assume I have the following collection. As you see, I have 9, 11, 66, and 3. And for each one of these numbers, I have an index. The first one is 0, the second one is 1, and so on. As you can see here, I said the first item, which is 9, the second item, which is 11, and so on. So each one of the items has its own known and fixed location. And if the data structure or collection supports these fixed locations, we say it's an ordered collection. Secondly, let's talk about immutability. We say a collection is immutable, in other words, changeable, if it's possible to update this collection after it has been created. So if you want to know if it's immutable, ask yourself, am I able to change the content of this collection after I create it? If the answer is yes, then it's mutable. Usually, we can update a collection by different ways. So when I say update, it could be adding a new element to that collection, removing an item from that collection, or changing the value of one item of that collection. So if a data structure or a collection supports any one of these operations, we say it's immutable. Now let's talk about the third attribute, which is indexing. Indexing, it's a way to access to an individual element of a collection, and usually to apply or to use indexing, we use square bracket. So if a collection has the ability to extract each individual item, we say it supports indexing. You have to know that in Python, index starts from zero. So the first item in the location number zero, the second item in the location number one, and so on. Also, keep in your mind that Python supports negative indexing, which mean minus one, minus two, and so on. And in this case, minus one represents the last item, minus two represents the item before the last item, and so on. Also, in Python, there is a data structure which is known as dictionary in which you can define your own index set if you don't want to use numbers as indexes, for example. Now, let's see some examples to understand the idea better. Let's assume that we have the following collection. I have a collection, it's named list1. It has 9, 11, 66, 3. And the index of the first item is 0, the second item is 1, and so on. Now assume I want to get the second item. In this case, I will use index operator after the list name. And as you see here, I open a square bracket and I put one. One means the second item, so I will get 11 and that's it. 
Now, let's say I want to get the third element, but in this case, I want to use negative indexing. In this case, you have to assume that minus one is the index of the last item, minus two is the index of the item before the last item, and so on. In this case, if I want to get the third element, which is minus two in this case, so I will say list one minus two, and this will give me 66. Now let's see one more example about indexing. And in this case, I'm going to show you a dictionary. It's named Dict1. As you see here, there is no numbers because I want to use a different indexes set. In this case, I choose key one, key two, key three, key four, and so on. In this case, there is no meaning for order and keep this in your mind. So I cannot say nine is the first item, 11 is the second item, and so on. That's not possible. But if I want to get access to the element 11, for example, I will say dict one, key two, and this will give me 11, and so on. Now let's talk about the last attribute, which is slicing. Slicing, it's a way to extract a slice. In other words, a subset of collection items from a collection. And usually to use slicing, we use also square bracket operator. And here you have to pass two numbers from where to start your slice and where you want to end this slice. And as you see here, we have to use colon between start and end. Sometimes you don't want to move step by step. So in this case, you can determine the interval step at which element are included in the slice. And in this case, you will add the third number which which is step in this case. So you will say slice, start, colon, end, colon, step. Since I am mentioning start, end, and so on, you will feel that I'm talking about order. So slicing is valid only for ordered data structures. So any data structures that support indexing, but it's not ordered, you cannot use slicing with. Let's see an example to understand the idea better. Assume I have the following collection, it's list one, it has element like 9, 11, 1 and so on. Now let's say I want to get the element from the location 0 to the location 2. When I say something like this, list 1, 0 to 2, I will get 9 and 11. Why only 9 and 11? Because in Python, when we use slicing, we take the element from start to end minus 1. So I will not include the element in the end location. So in this case, 2, which is end in this case, has the element 1. But 1 is not included because as I mentioned again, we take the element from start to end minus 1. And I will get a new list which has only two elements, in this case, 9 and 11. One more example, and now I will use negative indexing. So I have this list, but now minus 1 is the last item and so on. Let's say I want to extract the items minus 3 and minus 2. In this case, I will say list 1 from minus 3 to minus 1. This will give me 23, 12. And as you see here, the element in the location minus 1 is not included because I have to move from start, which is minus 3, to minus 1, minus 1, which is minus 2 in this case. And this will give me this new list, which has only two elements. The last example about slicing, let me assume I have this collection and in this case I'm going to use positive indexing. Now let's say I want to get the element from 0 to 5, but I don't want all of the element. I want to move by step of 2. In this case, I will say give me list 1 from 0 to 5, which means from beginning to the end with the step of 2. In this case, you will extract this element, which is 9, 1, 12, and this will give you this new list. In this case, I move two step to step because I choose the step by myself to be two. And that's all for this lecture. Before I end this lecture, I want to show you this table. This table summarizes all the details about all the collections in Python, which are string, list, tuple, dictionary, set. As you see here, I use, for example, quotes to define string, square bracket to define list, parentheses to define tuple, curly braces to define dictionary and set. And as you see here, I show you which one of these collections are ordered or mutable, indexed, supports slicing or does not support slicing. Don't worry if you see this table is overwhelming right now because in the next lectures we are going to take these tables row by row and we are going to learn in details about each one of these collection. But this now will give you a high level overview about this collection. So for example if you want an ordered collection you have to use list. If you want to use a read only collection you have to use tuple because it's unmutable which means you are not able to change the content once you create it. Now let's recap what we have learned in this lecture. First of all, collection has been defined. And as we see, collection is a data structure to have one or more than one items. After that, the collection attributes that you have to learn about each collection have been mentioned. And we say that for each one of these collection, you have to know the syntax, the attributes, which are order, mutability, indexing, and slicing. And finally, we mentioned that you have to know some useful functions about each one of these collection to make your life easier. 
We say a collection is ordered if it has a sequence of items where each item has its own, known, and fixed location in that sequence. We say a collection is mutable if it's possible to update that collection after it has been created. We say a collection is indexed collection if you can use index to get access to each individual item in this collection. In Python, the index starts from zero and Python also support negative indexing. The last attribute we have talked about was slicing and we say it's a way to extract a subset of elements from the collection. And to do that, we will use square bracket and we have to include two numbers from where to start and where to stop, which are start and end. Sometimes if you want to move a step by step, you have to determine the step by yourself by passing a step at the last item. That's all for this lecture and thank you very much for your time. If you are available, join me in the next lecture.